here we are going to study now a part of trigonometry which is called triangle trigonometry which is also known as properties of triangle let us consider a triangle abc it has three sides bc denoted by small a ac denoted by small b and ab denoted by what small c so bc is opposite to the vertex a denoted by the corresponding small letter ac is opposite to the vertex b so it is denoted by corresponding small letter ab side is opposite to the vertex c denoted by corresponding small letter now we denote the angles at the vertices by the corresponding capital letters a b and c so i have 3 plus 3 6 elements related to what the triangle three of which are sides and three of which are angles so three sides plus three angles are called six elements of a triangle if any three of them are known we can know the triangle completely except when angles of the triangle are known we know the triangle in shape but not in the size for example if i consider a triangle abc which is an equilateral triangle each angle is known to be 60 degree so i can draw infinitely many equilateral triangle of different sizes so if all the three angles are known we may not or may not know the triangle completely i mean we know the triangle in terms of shape not in size whenever three angles are known in other all cases we know the triangle completely that is if any three elements of six elements are known we can find the remaining three elements of that triangle that is called solving the triangle completely now to solve this we are going to use trigonometry there are trigonometric ratios sin cos tan sec cosec cot which are helpful in finding these three sides and angles of the triangle let us try to establish some relation among the trigonometric ratios and the sides of the triangle with these angles the very first rule is known as sine rule the rule states that in a triangle abc small a divided by sin a is equal to b divided by sin b is equal to c upon sin c so sides of the triangle are proportional to sines of the angles of the triangle this proportionality is equal to 2r where r is the circum radius of triangle abc that means i can draw one circle passing through the vertices of the triangle abc and if i take o as the center of this circle which is called circum circle so circum center of triangle abc then this oa ob and oc are each equal to what capital r which is the circum radius of triangle abc so sin rule is what a upon sin a is equal to b upon sin b is equal to c upon sin c is equal to 2r where r is circum radius r is circum radius now how to establish this result let's see because this is a circle this is the center of the circle this angle is a and this is the chord of the circle so this chord 
BC subtains an angle A at the circumference and this BC also subtains some angle BOC at the center of the circle. From the geometry we know that the angle subtended by BC at the circumcenter is double that of the circumference. So, if this is A, this must be double of A. Now, what we do is, let us drop the perpendicular from the center of the circle on the chord. So, this angle is twice A. So, let me drop the perpendicular from this point O on the side BC at say M. Then, these two triangles are very clearly congruent. And because this was twice A angle, angle BOC was twice A, therefore this angle becomes A, this angle also becomes A. Now, if you look into this triangle BMO, BMO, in this triangle, now because M is the midpoint of BC being dropped the perpendicular from the center of the circle on the chord. M is the midpoint of BC and total distance BC is A, therefore BM becomes A by 2, MC becomes A by 2. Now in this triangle, right angle triangle, O, M, B, if I find sin A, I get sin A is equal to opposite side that is A by 2 divided by the distance OB which is the radius of the circle. So, very clearly sin A is A upon 2R. So, by doing the cross multiplication I get A upon sin A is equal to 2R. So, similarly I have proved that A upon sin A is equal to 2R. So, by dropping the perpendicular from O on the side AC and from O on the side AB, I can establish the result B upon sin B is equal to 2R, C upon sin C is equal to 2R similarly. Hence, the result A upon sin A equal to B upon sin B equal to C upon sin C is equal to 2R is being proved. There are various proofs of this, but the one of the simplest proof that I have given to you of sin rule. So, remember A upon sin A is equal to B upon sin B is equal to C upon sin C equal to 2R. If I consider this 2R is equal to some constant A or K. So, A upon sin A equal to K means A is equal to K sin A. Similarly, B is equal to K sin B. C is equal to K sin C where K is the constant of proportionality. So, we can always express sides small a, b, c in terms of sin a, sin b, sin c with some proportionality constant. Similarly, I can write sin a equal to a k. If I assume that this 2r is 1 by k, then sin a becomes a k, sin b becomes b k, sin c becomes c k. So, in while solving the problems of properties of triangle, we at many, at many times we use this uh, fundamental rule that is A is equal to K sin A, B equal to K sin B and C is equal to what? K sin C etc. So, remember this. So, this rule is very important for us. The second rule that we will go about which is called the cosine rule. So, cosine rule is as follows. Cosine rule is given by cos A is equal to B square plus C square minus A square divided by 2BC or cos B is equal to C square plus A square minus B square divided by 2CA and cos C is equal to a square plus b square minus c square divided by twice a b. So, in triangle a b c, if all the three sides are known, small a b c, we can find all its angles using the rule known as cosine rule. So, cos a is given by this, 
cos b is given by this cos c is given by this so there is a sort of symmetry and one cyclic order by which you can easily remember the formula when you write cos a you begin with a then you write afterward b then c and then a divided by this 2 bc down similarly after bc comes after c a comes after a b comes after c a comes after a b comes and after b c comes divided by twice ab whichever two terms are there so two times the product of the roots of this is written in the denominator so this is what is called a cosine root now one can write this rule as if i do the cross multiplication 2 bc is brought to this side and then 2 bc cos a is brought to this side by bringing minus a square on this side i always write a square as b square plus c square minus 2 bc cos a similarly i can write b square is equal to a square plus c square minus 2 ca cos b and c square is equal to a square plus b square minus twice ab cos c so let us try to prove one of the results other things will come similarly now let us draw the diagram again for the proof of cosine rule suppose this is the triangle abc in order to prove this result i said there are various proofs but i would i would like to give you the simple proof of it so from the point a you drop the perpendicular on the opposite side at c and this angle is known to be b if this is b and the total distance bc is small a this opposite side is small c this opposite side is what small b suppose the height of this triangle abc bm sorry am is equal to what h now in this right angle triangle a b m if i find cos b it is b m upon hypotenuse is c so this b m becomes c cos b so this much distance is nothing but c cos b so adjacent side of the angle b i can write hypotenuse times cosine of the angle b now because this total distance bc is small a one can write the distance mc as small a minus c cos b so this much distance is known to be what a minus c cos b now let us apply pythagoras theorem for both the triangles so in triangle abm i have c square is equal to hypotenuse square is equal to h square plus c square cos square b so this is in triangle abm what i have c square is equal to h square plus c square cos square b similarly in this right angle triangle amc b square is equal to h square plus a minus c into cos b bracket square so in this right angle triangle pythagoras theorem is applied once again now what we do to establish this result we will try to eliminate h by taking the subtraction so if i get over here this is what something c square minus b square is equal to minus minus and minus h square h square is cancelled i get c square cos square b minus a minus c cos b bracket square so i get c square minus b square equal to 
सी स्क्वेर कॉस स्क्वेर बी माइनस ए माइनस सी कॉस बी ब्रैकेट स्क्वेर इज वॉट ए स्क्वेर माइनस ट्वाइस ए सी कॉस बी प्लस सी स्क्वेर कॉस स्क्वेर बी Now observe that this c square cos square b and minus c square cos square b is cancelled, and what is we are left with c square minus b square is equal to minus a square minus minus plus twice a c cos b. So what we are proving essentially is this a square. Plus c square minus two ac cos b is equal to b square. The result that I quoted after this it was b square is equal to c square plus a square minus twice c a cos b. This result I have proved using this. So a square plus c square minus twice a c cos b is equal to b square. A square plus c square minus twice a c cos b is equal to b square. This result is being established. If I wanted to apply this, I would have taken b a here, and the thing can be proved very easily. So if I choose this as a, this is b, and this is c, the result a square is equal to b square plus c square minus two b c cos a. Will come very easily. So this way we have proved the cosine rule. Now, after proving this cosine rule, you know that whatever angle I consider in triangle ABC, whichever, it always lies between zero and one eighty degree. So as far as sine of the angle is concerned, sine A. Sine B, sine C, they are always positive. In triangle ABC, whereas cos A, if A is obtuse angle, we know that cos A is negative, and whenever A is acute angle, cos A is positive, and whenever A is right angle, that time cos A becomes zero. So one can see one very important remark in this. So if I box this as a cosine rule, and if I make three cases regarding. B square plus C square minus A square because of this difference, I could have cos A either positive, negative, or zero. Accordingly, what we get, let us discuss very quickly. So B square plus C square is equal to A square if I choose. This numerator becomes zero, and hence cos A becomes zero, and cos A becomes zero means A is right angle. Therefore, triangle becomes right angle triangle, and we see that the Pythagoras theorem is also satisfied. Being a hypotenuse, angle opposite to a is capital A, which is 90 degree. So, Pythagoras theorem is satisfied over here. Whenever b square plus c square equal to a square, using what the cosine rule. So, this was the first remark. Second remark is if b square plus c square. Is greater than a square, then this difference is positive. Already b and c are the sides; it is positive. So numerator is positive, denominator positive. So right hand side is positive. Therefore, cos a is positive. And if cos a is positive, a has to be what acute. In this case, a is 90 degree. In this case, a is in between 0 and 90 degree. So whenever b square plus c square is greater than a square, you are Angle A is acute angle. Number three, if B square plus C square is less than A square, is less than A square means this is smaller than this. So difference is what negative. Negative upon some positive quantity is negative. So cos A is negative. Therefore A has to be what obtuse. So I must say that here. 90 degree is less than a is less than 180 degree so everything depends on b square plus c square is equal to a square or greater than a square or less than a square to get about the angle a whether it is acute 
obtuse or right angle. So b square plus c square equal to a square means a is right angle. b square plus c square greater than a square means a is acute angle and b square plus c square is less than a square means a is obtuse angle. So these are the remarks of the cosine rule for testing whether the given angle of the triangle is acute, obtuse or right.